and speakers who wish to create and deliver high-impact presentations that connect with and motivate their audiences. How about that? With over three decades of graphic design experience, he offers this shortened open, opening presentation from his PowerPoint Solutions workshop to show you PowerPoint presentations can, keyword can, be effective, informative, and if done correctly, even mildly entertaining. Please join me in welcoming Tom Mason. show you ad after ad after ad 
and you are kind of see the same thing over and over again. But this is so much better because you create these for the group that you're going to speak to. Say you have a big conference, and while the people are coming in, sitting down, getting ready, you can roll some, some ideas, some informational things on the screen that they can take a look at. So here's one that I created for NSA, the National Speakers Association. Well, people come into their meetings, these things constantly scroll through, they have, take about 10 seconds each. And when it gets to the end, it goes back to the beginning. So for maybe about 15 minutes or half an hour during the, before the presentation, all the people in the audience now have some basic ideas for what the organization is about, for the time, for the things, for the schedules, and things like that. It's a great way to introduce some background information to your audience. So, number three, show some goofy pictures of your goofy kids. <laughs> this is an incredibly powerful technique. Here are my goofy kids. That's Elizabeth on your left and Emily on your right. They're not quite this young now. They're a little bit older, but they are still just as goofy. And if you can find a way to put your kids up on the screen somehow, sneak it in, even if it's like a Fortune 500 presentation, whatever it is, get your kids up there, or your crazy cat, or your crazy aunt who has cats, whatever. People will relate to you, they will love you, they will think that you're actually a human being, instead of a PowerPoint person. Number four, use a push transition. Now transitions are the kind of things that one slide moves into the next slide, it goes from uh, the, the slide that you have, and there's all sorts of fancy ways you can do transitions in PowerPoint. They zoom and everything like that. But this push transition is really kind of a cool thing. So you get a, an image like this, and you get somebody in there. There's a little guy in the projector who pushes it. And he pushes it across. And look, it goes right to the next screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It right back. Oh, look, there's somebody else. So you one of the things you send me money for, I would be happy to do it. <laughs> but it's kind of a cool thing. It gives you the idea that you have this big, huge canvas that you're working on. Little tricks. You can make zoomy text. Now, most of the time I talk to the speakers that I work with, they say, don't animate the text. Gosh, people just hate it. After about the 30th time that you have a text flobbling in across the screen, <laughs> they're ready to kill you. But sometimes you can do some cool stuff. So, you know, you can do some stupid text. <laughs> Again, this may be the kind of thing you want to hire a professional for. My cards are in the back. We can talk about it. Do a professional voiceover. Now, one of the things in PowerPoint, the PowerPoint, the newest PowerPoint, you can record directly into a slide using a microphone and have a great voiceover. So again, I have talent. Khan helped me with this. I found some top-rated talent, and we got some else to the speakers round table. <laughs> Now, isn't that great? <laughs> <laughs> Professional voiceover talent is always terrific. Number seven, you can make transparent shapes. When you create a shape in PowerPoint, generally you take it and you just fill it with a color and you put it behind some text or you put it someplace and do something with it. But you can also make those shapes transparent. And it's really good for <coughs> overlaying text on a complicated background. You can take a background that's like this, a little bit more complicated maybe, but and you can take shapes create transparency in the meeting. <laughs> it makes the text that much easier. <laughs> you watch CNN, you watch Fox News, and they have those kind of backgrounds that are moving slowly behind the speaker. Well, you can do something like that. It's a little bit of a, 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 a complex thing to create something that moves back there, but something like this seems, it will seem like an appropriate thing for this type of thing. <laughs> Hey, split a background. This is one of the coolest things. I love doing this. You can take a background, looks like a normal, <coughs> typical background. It's actually two, which actually is split right there. That's where the background, there's one background lying on top of another. It's a fairly simple thing to do once you understand it, but I'm not telling anybody how I did it. <laughs> and then one of the cool things you can do, it's like magic. You press the button and look what happens. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so it's incredibly fun. I love doing it. <laughs> All right, number 10, big stuff up. This is one of my main favorites. I love doing, taking things that should not be looked at as facts and presenting them as facts. You put them on the screen, people go, oh yeah, oh yeah. So here we go, here's something we do. All right, here's all Toastmasters. This circle represents all Toastmasters, okay? Then this circle over here represents people who make big bucks. And we think, well, how do these two overlap? Well, of 
course, it's very simple. It's the speaker's round. <laughs> <laughs> you want to delve into the politics, all right. <laughs> if you like Ronald Reagan, you draw some people with hearts are over here. People with brains are over here. Now, who would be in the middle? Of course, it's conservative. <laughs> and wait a second, there's some guy way, way out here. That, of course, is out there. <laughs> okay, but let's, let's switch sides. We're going to switch sides here. Let's say you like Hillary Clinton. Okay, do the same thing, people with hearts, people with brains, blah, blah, blah. It's, who's the overlap? Of course, it's liberals. But then, who's out here? It's still out there. It's such a loser. Okay, all right, all right. Remember, like, when I said 10, but we're going to go a little further. We're going to go a little Use a quote. This is one of my favorite techniques, is to put something up on the screen. You give a quote to somebody, people think he actually said it. So, here's something we got. Okay, Barack, the speaker's round table is so cool. I'm sure he must have said individually those words at one time. <laughs> but even better, you can have a conversation between somebody and somebody else. So maybe there's a whole group of people that wants to answer Barack. So look, look who it is. <laughs> We're the speaker's round table. Barack, you, you can just understand that that is so cool. So those are using quotes. And number 12, final, I'm going to be done in a second. Make a strong close. Very, very important. Now, I've had great professional actors do my opening. I've had a professional voiceover do the center part. Okay, now I have the world's greatest professional speaker helping me with close. And as we talked about before, as Kim talked about, having getting somebody to give you a testimonial is a good way to work. So here we go. This is what it looks like.